What's going on, Safe Moon Army, Safe Moon family? Thanks again for joining me for yet another video. If you are new here or have not subscribed, subscribe, smash that like button, share with all your friends. Just so you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Anything you hear or see in this video is not financial advice. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members. Thank you guys so much for being a channel member. And if you want to join this channel, then just hit the join button below the video. On today's show, we're going to be covering low ray wand technology and why I think SafeMoon will be using it for its wireless mesh network. So strap in because here we go. All right, this is where we're starting off today. Now, guys, this is going to get super complicated. So I'm going to try to keep it as easy as possible because low ray and low ray wand technology can get super complicated. But I'm going to try to break it down and keep it as simple as possible. So let's talk about low ray and low ray wand. Well, low ray and low ray wand together defined a low power wide area network protocol designed to wirelessly connect battery operated things to the internet in regional, national, or global networks. Notice what I just said there, connect, wirelessly connect battery operated things to the internet. That sounds super familiar. And targets key internet of things requirements such as bi-directional communication, end-to-end -end security, mobility, and localization services. All of that screams SafeMoon, screams the things that they have been talking about in the past. So keep that in mind. The low power, low bit rate, and IoT use distinguish this type of network from wireless WAN that is designed to connect users or businesses and carry more data using more power. Now if we scroll down here one of the cool things to know about low ray WAN is that they can actually implement this in 4 and 5G networks. Researchers have proposed that low ray WAN could solve some of the issues concerning power usage in 4 and 5G technologies and that is something that SafeMoon said they wanted to get into. They wanted to get into telecommunications. They wanted to get into the ability to give Wi-Fi and mesh networks to areas that don't have access to the internet. They also wanted to provide them with cell service as well. Now let's fly on over to this. This is a paper titled Low Ray Wan Mesh Networks, a review and classification of multi-hop communication. Now I know this sounds like a lot because it is a lot. We are getting into some highly advanced technology and it is very, very complicated. So a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be reading to you are just gonna be summaries of these papers because they get super complex. So I'm just going to read you the abstract and then we'll go over the conclusions and basically what the whole thing was about. The growth of the Internet of Things or IoT led to the deployment of many applications that use wireless network like smart cities and smart agriculture. This is something that SafeMoon has said that they wanted to get into. Low power wide area networks LP wands meet many requirements of IoT or the Internet of Things such as energy efficiency, low cost, large coverage area and large scale deployment. Long range wide area networks are one of the most studied and most implemented LP1 technologies due to the facility to build private networks with an open standard. This is also known as the decentralized internet. Typically low ray WAN networks are single hop in a star topology composed of end devices that transmit data directly to gateways. Recently studies propose multi hop low ray WAN networks thus forming wireless mesh networks. Now this is something that SafeMoon said they wanted to do is they wanted to create wireless mesh networks over in the Gambia. And let's just jump to the bottom here. It says we hope to encourage other researchers to work on improving the performance of low ray WAN mesh networks with more theoretical and simulation analysis as well as practical deployment. So they want people to use this technology for wireless mesh networks. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom, because this is a very complex, very in-depth paper, but what they say down here in their conclusion, it says, furthermore, we presented some open issues and possible directions for practical large scale deployment of low ray WAN mesh networks. We encourage for Further development in multi hop communication to improve coverage, scalability, capacity, reliability, and energy efficiency of low ray WAN networks. So, they want people to develop this. They want people to innovate in this technology. They see this as the future of mesh networks in areas. Now, if we fly on over to this, this is another paper. Now, once again, these are all really in depth technical scientific papers, all on low ray WAN technology. It gets super complicated, guys. 
surprised, but I love this article. It says low ray wand for wind turbine monitoring prototype and practical development. Now we know that SafeMoon wants to get in the wind turbines. We know they want to connect it to IOT devices. How are they going to do that? Well, if they set up a low ray wand mesh network, then they could set it up this way to monitor the wind turbines energy efficiency. And if you read down here under the abstract, it says the energy grids become a cardiovascular system of today's civilization. In the recent years, the new political initiatives aiming at reducing the pollution by increasing the share of energy generated by renewables have gained momentum, which introduced novel challenges and use cases. In this paper, they will investigate the utility and report experiences of deploying a prototype wind turbine monitoring solution based on recently developed low power wide area network LP1 technologies named low ray one. We engineered instruments and deployed the complete end to end solution starting from the power generation monitoring sensor nodes and up to the IOT platform with a web based graphical user interface. Guys, this is crazy stuff. This is crazy complicated stuff. But as I'm saying it, I hope you can see how this actually fits into what SafeMoon said that they wanted to do. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, because this once again is super complicated stuff, they talk about their findings and their conclusions. I wanted to read this right at the bottom as the conclusions and lessons learned. It said in the paper, we detailed the design and reported the initial results coming from deployment and use of wind turbine monitoring solutions based on low ray one LPW a technology. Based on our results, the following conclusions and recommendations can be given. First, low ray wand deployment as a private network, decentralized web, appeared to be quite convenient and efficient for enabling connectivity of IoT sensors at isolated remote locations. Gee, I wonder if there's going to be isolated remote locations in the Gambia where they're going to have this set up. Second, the use of network servers integrated with the gateways was quite convenient for our use case. This approach enabled to both reduce the operation expenditures and increase the security. That is something you guys have to worry about when you're getting into low ray wand technology is you really want to push security and I will go over that further in this video. So what is the conclusion of all this guys? It says to conclude our practical experiences show that low ray wand provides a decently easy to use and cost efficient solution which can enable a sheer diversity of non-critical monitors applications in the context of power grids. That's crazy, guys. And even though before making a final decision, there is one more component which we have not addressed in this paper, which is the scalability aspect. In the future, they plan to investigate this aspect by the means of extensive simulations in the context of wind farm scenarios. Guys, this is what SafeMoon is actually doing right now. This makes so much sense. I believe they're going to be getting in the lower way one. Now, why do I think that? Well, let's fly on over to this. This is yet another paper, another paper talking about low ray wand technology. And it says using blockchain to build trusted low ray wand sharing servers. This is once again, something super important. And if we read under the abstract of that, it says with the rapid growth of the internet of things market and the requirement, low powered wide area technologies have become popular in various LPWA technologies, narrow band IOT and long range are A, low ray, are two main leading competitive technology. Compared with narrow band IoT networks, which are mainly built and managed by mobile network operators, low ray wide area networks, low ray one, are mainly operated by private companies or organizations, which suggest two issues, trust of the private network operators and lack of network coverage. So this is something that they're saying right now. They're saying that this is going to be a private network of operators, but you have to trust the company that is going to be providing this technology. So how do you do that? Well, this study aims to support a conceptual architecture design of a blockchain built in solution for low ray one network servers to solve these two issues for low ray one IOT solution. So they're saying that the way that they're going to fix the trust of a private network operators and lack of network coverage is to design it with a built in blockchain. Now, can you guys see why it's taking so much time to get the blockchain out for safe Moon, because if they are using low ray wand technology, it's still being innovated as we speak. So they got to make sure that the technology that they are deploying over in the Gambia with the IOT devices, with the wind turbine monitoring, that they can be able to use this low ray wand mesh network with a built in 
blockchain that could make the ecosystem function properly. Now I know that's a mouthful. It is super complicated. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, for their conclusion, it says our solution uses the blockchain technology to build an open, trusted, decentralized and tamper proof system, which provides the indisputable mechanism to verify that the data of a transaction that has existed at a specific time in the network. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first work that integrates blockchain technology and low Rayuan IoT technology. Guys, did you hear that? This is the first work that integrates both blockchain and low Rayuan IoT technology. That is crazy. So the integration utilizes advantages of both technologies. And in the future, we also can use smart contract script technology to define automated trading models in the IoT network. But even without it, some basic functions like billing and roaming could be used in an automatic way in low Rayuan. So you could see that this stuff is crazy. If you scroll down a little bit more, you could see the blockchain architecture of a low Rayuan server but this gets super complicated and that is why it's taking a little bit longer to get this stuff out. So now let's fly on over to this. This is stored and forward cube satellites using low ray technology and private low ray wand servers. Now guys, I just wanted to show you this. This is satellites. This is low ray wand technology. This is private networks. And if you scroll down here, I just wanted you to show you this. The location is Utah State University in Logan, Utah. There was a lot of people out in Utah talking about cube satellites and low Rayuan technology. And I think that that is why SafeMoon is located in Utah. Now let's fly on over to this. This was a conversation on Discord and I'm actually happy that I found this conversation and it actually didn't happen too long ago because I was hoping that I could find something tying SafeMoon to low Rayuan technology. And here was a question asked by Bill Diamond Hands. What do you think of low Rayuan technology? And Captain Holdel or John Caroni says, oh, now that's a 3000 IQ question right there. By itself, meh. However, paired with some more practical long distance transmission solutions, you can get something wonderful in terms of connectivity. So obviously if John Caroni knew how to respond to a question about low Ray Wan technology, that must mean that they are looking into it. Guys, that's all I have for today's show. If you liked it, subscribe, smash that like button, share with all your friends. I hope you're super excited and I'll see you in the next video.